Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC, and we're here at SC13 in Denver, Colorado, and we're here at the Motivair booth, and I'm here with Rich. How are you doing today, Rich? Doing great this morning. Uh, Thank you very much. So, yeah, so the, so the Rich brothers are here. Why don't we start at the beginning, Rich? Um, um, who is Motivair, and who do you help? Okay, Motivair is a cooling specialist based in Buffalo, New York. We have two sides of our business. One side is cooling systems for outside the data center, and then also cooling systems for inside the data center. And that's what we have on display today. Okay, okay. So, um, now this device, we were talking earlier, this is an active uh, liquid cooling system. What's the advantages of that versus the old passive system? Well, you know, back uh, several years ago, there was a lot of talk about passive technology, which was just a, an idle coil stuck at the back of the rack. And what we've done is we've expanded on that and created an active chill door, okay, which is uh, an array of fans and uh, water flow control that allows our product to actively react to what's going on inside the server rack. Density loads change, chill door reacts immediately, whether it's based on higher air temperatures or differential pressure from the back of the rack to the room. We've got many different levels of control, but basically we're actively controlling at the rack level. Okay, okay. And then with, with liquid cooling, I mean, do I need a bunch of manifolds and a lot of plumbers and uh, or at least simplified that as well? We've tried to simplify that and basically um, we do provide some underfloor manifolds that allows for easier install for clients, right, whether we're doing a small cluster or a large cluster. Um, simple quick connect hoses that can feed in and out of the door either from under a raised floor or from overhead depending on what the client's infrastructure is. Okay, okay, well speaking of that, what kind of kilowatt rating is this able to handle? <laughs> well, uh, believe it or not, we're currently up to 45 kilowatts per rack uh, with some prototypes and design taking us over 80 kilowatts right now. Holy cow, so, so can we see the inside and see how it works? Yeah, I'd love to show you. Easy access for the client right to the back of the rack. Okay, you'd have, you are, we are at the back of the rack here, so these are where the servers would be located. We've got a simple supply and return header to the coil, fed as you can see here from the bottom. And if somebody wants to have this door fed from above, we build the coil in an inverted fashion and have connections at the top of the door, okay? If we wanted to go back here, and the client wanted to get access to the actual components themselves, simple access for any service that the client may need to do or we as the manufacturer may need to do on a live rack. Okay. You notice anything can be serviced and maintained while the door is still shut and still providing cooling. Oh, okay. okay. And, and is this, does this talk to the network then and then give you uh, data about what's going on? Yeah, the, the PLC uh, not only is it collecting a lot of data, uh, temperature inside the rack, room temperature, uh, differential pressure for operating in that form, uh, but it has the ability to interface with anyone's front end control system. Uh, yeah. BACnet, MSTP, BACnet IP, LAN, Modbus, they're all available. The client only needs to land their control wire right to the PLC. Okay. So, uh, you know, this looks like it uh, for a big cluster. Do you have any recent deployments you can tell us about? On uh, yeah, actually, uh, this year we just deployed on uh, Cascade, which is uh, PNNL's new cluster up in Washington State. Uh, it's pretty impressive. There's uh, 48 racks of gear there, and they're operating at about 34 to 38 kilowatts per server rack. Wow, wow, and this is a big machine. I think uh, some, nearly 200,000 cores, isn't it? Yes, uh, I'm still wondering how they got all that in a standard 42U by 600 rack, but they were, and then the next challenge was cooling it. Uh, so obviously uh, they're looking for a high efficiency cooling method. They actually feed our chilled doors from a naturally occurring aquifer that's underneath the facility. So they're not even paying really for chilled water. Chilled water is free, all right? <laughs> yeah. and, and then they feed it to the doors. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that, any other uh, recent uh, uh, procurements for you? Uh, we just recently did a, a small cluster down at University of Arkansas. Uh, they seem to be pretty happy with that one. And uh, a couple of major projects that are, uh, should turn loose uh, early next year. Okay, so, yeah. so how do people engage with you? Do you go through channels or you know, what do you do? Uh, we, you know, we've got uh, different vertical markets that we deal with. We have reps in all of our local markets here in North America. And then we also have OEMs and partners as well. So uh, there's many different ways to find the product in the marketplace.